Hi, um, today let's look at the Sporzovian harmonic function analysis theory. So Sporzovian believes that for any diatonic chord, it must contain one or two functions out of the three, which are T for tonic, S for subdominant, and D for to uh, dominant. So primary chords are chord 1, 4, and 5. Uh, chord 1 is the tonic chord, so we use T to represent it. And chord 4 is subdominant, so we use S. And chord 5 is dominant, we use D. And other chords in the scale, um, for, for example, chord 2 is represented by S2. Why? Because it shares two common notes with the subdominant chord. So we just say it has the function of subdominant. And say for chord six, so you have two common notes with um, the tonic and two common notes with the subdominant. And chord three got two common notes with dominant and two common notes with tonic. And chord seven got two common notes with dominant. So, uh, letter case rule. The Roman numeral subscripts are always capital letter. And the uh, letter case for T, D, and S is dependent on whether the primary triad of each function is major or minor. After deciding that, you can apply that to other chord in the, in the scale. Um, here is the TDS. Um, letter case for each scale. Uh, in the first column, we have the natural major, which is your normal major. And so you use capital T, capital D, capital I, because all three chord, um, that's tonic chord, dominant chord, and subdominant chord are major chord. After deciding that, we can apply this to other chord in the scale. For example, here, in the natural major, although your chord two is is a minor chord, but you still write it using capital S. Why? Because the um the the chord four, which is a subdominant chord in the scale, is a major chord. So we apply um the letter case for S for as any other chord that contain S in the scale. So we use capital S, not um, lowercase s. Same for others. And there are other four very important scale that you should know. And there are three not very important scale. And if you see any uh, number next to the core symbol, then it must fall into one of these three categories. So firstly, it's um, we have the inversion of the chord. So if it is the first inversion of a triad, then we put um, subscript 6 next to it. And if it's the second inversion, we use 6, 4. And for 7th chord, we just write number 7 next to it. And um, the first inversion of 7th chord, we use 6, 5. Second inversion of 7th chord, we use 4, 3, and the third inversion, we just use 2, right? And uh, it's a nice chord. Uh, if we want to represent nice chord, then we use 9. So if we compare these two, we will find th that in Roman numeral analysis, you will put 7 and 9 at the top right corner. But um, in this system, we just put it on the bottom right, like this, 7 and 9. And because we have other uses for the top right corner. Extension node. And so when we, uh, when we analyze the function of a chord, we only look at the root node, third node, and the fifth node, and ignore the, the any extension nodes like seventh, co seventh node or ninth node. Um, for example, in this, why is D77? Because it got the two common nodes with dominant chord. 
but some people might think it also got to um, come north with the subdominant chord. Uh, but however, this is wrong. But we do use D. Why we can't put S? Because the A note here is the seventh note, which is the extension. We do not include that when we analyze function of the chord. Therefore, the chord is D77, not SD77. So it doesn't got the function of subdominant. And the second case is when you have the six or four or two at the top right. So what that means is basically you replace the nearest possible chord note with that note. So for example, here, uh, you replace the fifth note with the sixth note. So you just write D6. And here you replace the uh, third note with the fourth note. So you just write four. And uh, here you replace the third note with the second note, so you, you write two here. Um, so you won't see four and two very often because um, the fourth note and second note, when it appears in, in the triad, it is um, always, almost always considered as a partitura or suspension note, right? Uh, however, some people might realize that your uh, subscript 6 can also be represented as the first version of another chord, so you just put it on the bottom right, right? So when that happens, then you use the subscript, so you put on the bottom, not the top. And the only time you, you will have to use subscript, superscript is when a seventh chord it's replaced the, the fifth note with the sixth note. So for example, here, you got your dominant sevens here, but if you replace the fifth note in the chord with the sixth note, then you, you have to write it like this, D7, 6. Yeah, so, and uh, so when you have a chromatic note in the chord, then you just basically represent that by writing that at the top left corner, like this. And um, for example, this chord, uh, let's figure out why it is called flat one S two six. Um, so firstly, it shares two common nodes with subdominant. So we say it got the function of subdominant and then we look at the root node. Uh, the root node is the second degree of the scale, so we, we read two. And it is the, the first inversion of the chord because it, its base node is the third. And uh, finally, we, we find that the root node of this chord is flattened. So we read flat one. So there are some chords that don't follow the normal rule here. So first is the cathedral 6-4. Basically, tonic triad with the dominant note in the bass can appear in two different situations. So firstly is um, when you have this chord in the middle of the phrase treated as passing chord or just neighbor chord, then we consider that as the second inversion of the tonic triad. Then it is written as T6-4. However, in second case, when it falls into a strong beat in a cadence point before dominant or dominant sevens, then it is written as K64 with as cadential 64. So uh, cadential 64 has very strong sense of dominant function, so we can't write it as T64. So we just write it as K64, not T64. And dominant, double dominant chord is basically the dominant of dominant. And same for D, D7. And you also got deviation chord. Uh, basically, it's you just borrow the chord from another scale. Um, so to pr prepare for the next chord. So I hope you all enjoy this video and take something out from this video. 
and thank you. We will ever see you in the next video.